tell you, Dad, it's the softest cop in the world. Nothing can go wrong if you do what I say. Fine, daughter, I got myself. I don't hear from her but once every two years. And when she does see fit to take a journey back to Glasgow to visit her old father, she's as bedizened and bedecked as a Jezebel. Where do you get that fur coat? That's my business. Oh, fetch your scalp across your painted mouth if you're speaking of that way. You're no daughter of mine. You talk like a sauce a anyway. Oh, I've got nowhere in London with that Gobles accent I inherited from you. It's a good job your mother's not alive to see you now. Oh, all right. Don't let's argue. I came up here to Glasgow to talk business. And I brought you some whiskey, didn't I? At four quid a bottle. Oh, well, there's no use wasting good stuff, even if it does come through dirty channels. Oh, as if you cared where it comes from, as long as it's there for you to drink. I've got a reputation to consider. I and a good job. A good job, an engine driver. Anyway, you only keep the job because you can hold your grog better than any man I ever saw. Aye, uh, <clears throat> there's not money can drink like me and still keep a clear head. I fired an engine for eight years, and I've driven one for five. I've been on that footplate for more than a bottle of whiskey inside me money at him, and no one any the wiser. Well, see if your head's clear enough to take this in. You're taking the 8.55 from Edinburgh through to London tomorrow night, aren't you? What if I am? I'll tell you what. Ashley's the big jewellers are sending 60,000 quids worth of diamonds by registered mail on that train. 60,000 quid. Those stones have been up here at Ashley's Glasgow branch for setting, and they're going down to London for sale. What's on your mind, girl? How'd you like to 5,000 quid for yourself? Keep talking, you hussy. I've met some pretty hot people in London. If I could get my hands on that jewellery, I could unload it and give it yet enough to pay you 5,000 quid. And Tom Black another 5,000 quid for his share. Tom Black? Where's well, young Tom coming to this? Well, he's firing for you tomorrow night, isn't he? Ah, he is. Okay, and here's the drill. I've had a talk with Tom Black already. Oh, you have, have you? Yes, and I'm going to meet him again later tonight. He's willing to take a chance if you are. Come on, stop shelly shelly. And what do you want us to do? All you've got to do is to keep your mouth shut and see that that little puff puff of yours is running to schedule. Come on, Tom. Drink up. Let's get out of here. I want to talk. Okay. All right, let's go. Now then, let's hear it. Well, it's just the way I told you last night, Tom. The stuff will be in the mail van, and I'll be in a first-class compartment in the next coach. I bribed the porter to lock me in, so I won't be disturbed. The ticket collector... Lindsay Jackson will be doing that job. Yeah, he'll come along and check the train before we get to Stony Park. That's right. You leave the engine... Come along the roof to my compartment. I'll open the window and you can come down. We'll be doing over 60 along that stretch. I'll need to tie a rope around the ventilator on the roof and let myself down. You'll have to guide my feet in. Right. I'll have a Mac and a trilby for you in my bag and a first-class ticket as well. You'll slip the Mac on and pull the trilby well down over your face. Oh, better bring gloves too. A tansy will maybe see my dirty hands. Okay. Now then, when he's checked the tickets, he'll go back to the corridor, unlock the mail van door and go through to check the rest of the train. You follow him. Push him in, cosh him, close and lock the door with his keys, rip open that mailbag and bring the diamonds back to me. Locking the door again as I come out? That's it. You'll give me the stuff, go up the roof, go up the rope onto the roof and back to the footplate. Where I'll burn the coat and the rest of the stuff. Aye, I've got it all straight. Here, but, but what if somebody's in the corridor when I follow Jack's note? After the nearly three o'clock in the morning, most of the passengers will settle down. But if there is? I'll have to wait and get Jackson on his way back. Anyway, it's worth the risk, isn't it? Anything's worth the risk if it gets me enough money to buy what you want. I've never stopped thinking about you, Janet, since you went to London. Haven't you, Tom? Really? Why didn't you answer my letters? Oh, I've been so busy, Tom. I wish I knew what's keeping you so busy. That coat, for instance, mink, isn't it? Cost a lot of money, those things, eh? I've got it with some pretty clever people, you know, since I left Glasgow. Uh, I suppose that flashy-looking fellow I saw you talking to last night outside your hotel is one of them. Don't be crazy, Tom. I, I met him by accident. He's a commercial traveller or something. Maybe you're telling the truth, and maybe you're not. But get this, Janet. Oh, Tom, you're hurting my arm. Listen, I'm throwing away my job, my good name, and everything else to do this. Just because, well, I want to give you the sort of life you seem mad on. You wouldn't expect me to settle down as the wife of a Gorbals farmer, would you? I told you, Tom, when we pull this off, you quit your job and come down to London. And we'll get married? Of course, darling. That's the whole idea. We'll be able to live very nicely on 15,000 quid. I thought you said you'd get 20,000 for the stuff. I've got to cut me old man in, haven't I? Okay. 
But if you're not being straight with me about that fellow at the Don't hotel, Janet... Don't be crazy, it... Tom. There's no one else. You know that. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Uh, that's more like the Janet I used to know. I tell you, Jerry, they've fallen for it hook, line and sinker. You're quite sure of your old man, Janet? I'm sure of both of them. Good. Then I can check out of this lousy hotel and drive back to London tonight. Oh, gosh, what a setup! They do all the work, you cop the sparklers and I sell them. Then we both nip out of the country someplace where they'll never see us again. They won't dare put up a squeal. Even when they rumble, they've been twisted. Oh, it's a cinch. Mm, all the same, I hate to think what would happen if Tom ever caught up with us. He's as tough as they come. Now, don't you worry about him. I'll be at Euston to meet you tomorrow night. And when you walk off that train, nobody's going to catch up with us. Not ever, sweetheart. There we are, darling. Two nice seats. Uh, what time does the train go? 8.55. 8.55. Ah, five minutes to spare. Come on, let's walk down and have a look at the engine. Oh, Archie, must we? You can look at it when we get to London tomorrow morning. I shan't feel like it then. Come on. You know, Uncle Bill used to bring me to this station when I was a kid to look at the trains. I hate to see him cracking up like this. I cheered him up no end to see you. You ought to be proud of a nephew who uses 48 hours leave to come all the way to Edinburgh just to visit an ailing old man. Oi, oi, that's the first whistle. Better get back to our carriage. Come on, Joan. That's the lot, Danzy. Lock it up. Right away Darling. Ah. Oh, pity we couldn't afford first class tickets. Oh, don't be silly, darling. We're saving up. I really should have got you asleep. Oh, I don't mind sitting up as long as I've got your shoulders to lean on. Hmm. All right. This is the ticket collector. Tickets, please. Here you are, chap. Thank you, sir. Thanks. How are we running? Oh, a couple of minutes late. But we've got a straight run from here on. We'll make it up in no time. Good night. So long. Maxwell and Razor Hello, this one's locked. Tickets, please. Here you are, Inspector. Thank you, madam. Uh, your ticket, sir. Here you are. Thank you. You want me to lock this door again, madam? No, you can leave it open now. Right, John. Good night. Okay, Tom, after him. Back in five minutes. Inside. Oh, you don't. <laughs> John Black, what the places are you doing here? Put that standard down. Oh. Eddie, you, you knocked my heart off and saw who it was, Tansy boy. I guess I'll have to finish you off now. Get the stuff? I, I finished him. You what? I had to. He recognized me. You bundled it. If I hadn't done him any, he might have remembered seeing me in here with you, then, then you'd have been mixed up. Well, where's the stuff? Here. All right. Now, out of the window. Quick, and back to the foot plate. Okay. I've got the rope. When do I see you? All right. Hey, Tom. Tom. What is it? Where's your other glove? You've only got one on. What? Oh, I, I must have dropped it in the... Oh, you fool, you fool! Let's see if it's in the corridor. All right. Okay, you, you can shut the window. The blasted fool. If he's left it in the van, I... Oh, thank the 
Lord. Phew, that shook me. Tickets, please. Tickets, please. I'm afraid I must have dropped my ticket somewhere. I, I had it in the train, but... Sure, I... it's not in the pocket of your coat. I'm absolutely certain. Then I'm afraid I must ask you to wait till the other passengers... But, but I can't wait. Uh, look here. Here's two five-pound notes. That'll cover the fare. You can keep the change. Yeah, wait a minute, miss. I'll have to have your address. What? Oh, oh well, here. Here's my card. I've got another train. Well, I'll be... Uh, tickets, please. All tickets ready, please. Archie, the girl who just went through the barrier, the one in the mink coat. What about her? She's dropped her glove. There it is. Quick. Okay. Close the barriers at once, you men. Don't let anyone else out. Close those barriers. Well, what's the caper, Alf? I don't know. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I want to catch that girl. Sorry, chum. You'll have to wait. Station master's orders. Stand back, please. Back from the barrier. Oh, Archie, I wonder what's the matter. Oh, what's wrong? An accident or something? Oh, come on, open up. I want to get hurt. Oh, Archie, what's the matter? Take the the train again. What the dickens is all this about? Sorry, sir. But you'll have to do as you're asked. There's been a murder. Murder? Yes, on the train. You'll all have to wait till the police arrive. Please resume the same seats as you were occupying. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, back to your seats. Come on, on. One more third class and two first class compartments to check. Not a single suspect so far, sir. I'm betting whoever did this dropped off the train. But where? She's never made less than 40 miles an hour since passing Stony Park. The collector was all right there. A number of people have sworn they saw him just before passing that point. Then maybe the killer was one of those few who got through the barrier before it was closed. Well, there's three more compartments. That gives us three more chances. Let's hope he's in here. Come on. Now, that's, uh, sorry to have kept you waiting so long, but... No trouble at all, Inspector. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, the... oh no, right. No, no, it can't be. Tell, tell me I'm seeing things. It's 49, I'm afraid, sir. And Miss Carr. Oh, my Lord. Did you want to give him your visiting card for, Janet? I tell you, I was rattled, Jerry. I knew that guy was dead in the mail van and I was carrying the swag. All I wanted to do was to get rid of the evidence. Oh, well, you can forget about that. I fenced it this afternoon. Did you get the money? <laughs> sure, I got it. How did you come to lose your ticket, anyway? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I was a bit jittery and dropped it. Maybe in the carriage. Well, the coppers checked that train for possible suspects. The afternoon papers are full of it. Do you think they'll come here? Well, of course they'll come here. Well, what'll I do? <laughs> tell them the truth. Tell him you went to Glasgow to visit your old man. You've got nothing to hide. Well, what's an engine driver's daughter doing in a flat like this? Well, you're married to me, ain't you? I'm a successful gambler. The cops haven't got a thing on me. So relax, baby. We haven't got a thing to worry about. Not a single thing. I might have known it. Trust you to be on that train 49. You draw crime like honey draws the flies. I can't say I'm flattered, sir. Quite sure you saw nothing unusual? Quite, Sarge. The man kept our tickets just before we reached Stony Park, then passed on towards the mail van. It, have you recovered the diamonds, sir? Yes, black diamonds. Black, sir? The nearest we found to diamonds were two small pieces of coal on the mail van floor. Well, we've checked everybody on that train very carefully, and they all appear to be above suspicion. Of course, we can't tell how many passed through the barrier, but in response to our broadcast message, eight of them have come forward. All thoroughly respectable people. Did you find the young lady in the mink coat, sir? What young lady? There was no young lady among the eight who answered our broadcast. Nevertheless, Sarge, one did pass through the barrier just before it closed. She dropped her glove. I tried to catch her. Seemed in an awful hurry. What was she like? Oh, very elegant, sir. Mink coat, crocodile shoes, nylon stockings, trim ankles. You didn't notice her hat, I suppose? Uh, no, Sarge, I didn't get that far. What's that, Constable? Uh, the, I, I, I was picking up her glove, sir. My line of vision was somewhat <laughs> limited. <clears throat> so, well, how well, this, uh, this certainly wasn't the work of a woman. Still, it's a pity we can't check on her. Well, you can if you wish, Sarge. Don't say this young woman gave you her address. Actually not, Sarge, no. But she did give it to the ticket collector at the barrier. Did she now? Yes, sir. She lost her ticket. I heard her say so. She gave him ten pounds and her card. Uh, said she couldn't wait. Ten, eh? Yes, sir. Didn't wait for the change. We'd better check on this, right? Yes, sir. Borderline, would you like to do a little job for us as a plainclothes aide? Would I, Sarge? Just give me a chance. All right. 
I'll fix it with the uniform inspector for you to go down to Euston where you'll locate this ticket checker and get that young woman's address. Oh, jolly good, Sarge. And remember, my lad, that's all we're asking you to do. It's just a routine checkup. Routine checkup, yes, sir. So don't try out any of those highfalutin theories of yours. Oh, me, Sarge? <laughs> you ought to know me better than that. We do, 49, we do. That's just the trouble. Care to come with me? I'd love to, darling. Oh, by the way, if you're going to visit this young lady, you'd better take that glove. Oh, where is it? On the windowsill there. <laughs> Funny thing, it's a man's glove. And a very expensive one at that. A man's glove? Are you quite sure it was she who dropped it? Not certain. I'll just get my coat. Ah, uh-huh. lovely bit of stuff. Wish I had a pair of these. Oh, well. This glove's absolutely filthy inside. No one would think she'd been using it to heave coal or something. All right, Copper. Ready and waiting. Oh, what's the matter? Why the puzzle frown? Uh, something in my mind trying to add up two and two. Uh, I don't know what two and which two. Now leave the simple arithmetic until later and let's get on with the job in hand. Come on. Listen, Angus, you drunken sort. You'll never be able to stand on that footplate tonight. Uh, you'll not see the day I can do my job, Oh, whiskey is life, oh, man. shut up, you old fool. Shut up. Yeah, well, if you're seen in that state, they'll never let you take the train back. We've got three hours yet, Tom, before we're due on the job. Ah, and it'll take you that long to get sober. I'm not going back until I've got my money. A 5,000 quid. I'm going round to collect my money. <laughs> going where? To New Hampton Mansions, Camden Square. That's where Janet lives, my boy. Janet? <laughs> But you said you didn't know where she lived. She wouldn't even give me her address. Said it was too risky. Aye, too risky for her. What do you mean? <laughs> the night she came to see me in Glasgow, I sent her out to the room to get some water to drink from whiskey. Water? You? I didn't need drink it. I only wanted the chance to give her her bath. You would, you? Wait, eat. wait. I found a letter in it, Tom, my boy. A letter that means a lot to me and to you, too. Come on, out with it, man. What are you talking about? Listen to this. Janet... Darling, yeah. everything's fixed at this end. I've booked a cabin on a deck in the Southern Cross. She sails next Saturday. I'm driving up to Glasgow and hope to arrive at the hotel sometime tomorrow afternoon. If those suckers won't do the job for 5000 or for the more, it doesn't matter because we won't be paying them anyway. What? Here, show me that. If there's any trouble, we should worry. We'll be on the way to... To Australia, and they'll have to carry the can. Your loving husband, Jerry. It's not true. It can't be true. You're, you're fooling me. You didn't find this in her bag. I see you didn't. Go, my collie, you fool, and stop shouting. Aye, I found it in her bag, all right. Why didn't you tell me this? I, I've gone and killed a man for her. Why didn't you tell me this before because I did? Because you wouldn't have gone through it, and I wanted the money. You want your money too, don't you, Tom? I want more than money now. Ah, there's no woman 5,000 quid would make you forget. Come on, Tom. I've got a wee debt to collect at 27 New Hampton Mansions. You mean I've got a debt to pay and you're not coming with me? Try and stop me, that's all. All right, you asked for it. Oh, hey, what's going on there? He hit him. Just smacked him right in the kisser. Oh, the, the old swine. He, he, he tried to pinch my wallet. Do you want to make anything of it, eh? You better get out of here. We don't want no trouble. Don't worry, I'm away. 27 New Hampton Mansions. Well, you've got the address, Archie. Where do we go now? Back to headquarters? No need to. I'll phone in with the details and then... What? We'll return this glove to Mrs. Jerry Burton at New Hampton Mansions. I thought your job ended here at Houston when you'd got that address. I've been adding up that little sum I was telling you about. Not the answer yet? I've got a hunch we might find it through the lady in the mink coat. What's on your mind? Diamonds. What? Oh, you mean the stones that were stolen from the mail van? No, I mean the two little black diamonds that were left on the floor of that van. By whom? That's just what's troubling me. Listen, darling, the inside of this glove is filthy, and do you know what with? No. Tell me. Coal dust. Two small pieces of coal were found by the body of the ticket collector. Well, that's odd. Now, no one on that train is under the slightest suspicion, at least none of the passengers. So what? There are two men on that train that Wilson and Wright haven't even dreamed of interviewing. Who? The engine driver and the fireman. What? It sounds crazy, I know, but... Archie, are you trying to say that one of the engine crew crawled along the top of a train going at about 60 miles an hour? It's possible. Especially if he had an accomplice in the train to open the window for him. You mean the woman in the mink coat? All I'm saying is that the woman in the mink coat dropped a man's glove 
And that glove had obviously been worn by somebody whose hands were smothered in coal dust. My Sunday bonnet. Well, you'd better tell Inspector Wilson your theory right away. I'm going to tell him just as much as I think it's good for him to know. Come on, Joe. What about Joss found impudence? In spite of my explicit orders, he goes off to interview this woman. And phones in a message to the station officer that he's doing so. Come on, Wright. We'd better get round to New Hampton Mansions before he makes a fool of himself. Or fools of us. What's that, Sergeant? Uh, nothing, Inspector. I'm with you. I'm quite sure your old man's got no idea where you're living, Janet. I told you, he knows nothing. And uh, nor this fellow Tom Black. There's no possible way either of them could know. Ah, well, we'll be on the high seas this time tomorrow. <laughs> like a drink? I need it. A big one. <laughs> Someone at the door. All right, I'll go. And listen. If it's the police, just stick to the story we worked out. Okay, Jerry. Go and get some beer out of the fridge. Maybe these coppers could do with a drink, too. Don't keep them here longer than you can help. Okay. Yeah? What do you want? I'm Tom Black. What? And first I want you... Now for her. Who is it, Jerry? Bring him in for a drink. I'm in, Janet. Tom, but how did you... No. No! Give away. I can explain everything. Tom! There it is, number 27. Just along at the end of the corridor. Come on, Joe. Well, this theory of yours had better be right, copper boy. Otherwise, Wilson will have your scalp. <laughs> Neck or nothing, that's me. <laughs> Hello. That's funny. The door's open. Archie, uh, look. There's someone lying on the floor in the hall. Stand back, Joe. Blimey. Looks like he's running to a locomotive. Oh, Archie, his face. Is, is he? No, he's alive, all right. But he's in pretty bad shape. What the blaze is that? Shh, Listen. It's a woman in that other room. She sounds as if... Stay here. I'll go and see. Not likely. I'm coming too. Oh, there she is. Keep away, Joe. This is the work of a maniac. Don't let him hit me again. My Sunday helmet. The girl in mink. The poor thing. I'll go and get some water. There must be a bathroom somewhere. Now, take it easy, now. Take it easy. How did this happen? Um, Black, he, he came here and... Who's Tom Black? Fireman. Uh, ah. Was he on the 855 down from Scotland yesterday? Yes, he, he, he only did it for me. He, it's all my fault. I, I made him do it. Do it. Easy now, he's easy. Where is this man? <coughs> what the blazes? Oh, she quick. In the bathroom. He, he tried to grab Stand me. Stand aside. Good. Good Lord. Are you Tom Black? I am Tom Black, all right. I heard you coming. All right, Black. I'm a police officer. A uh, cop, And eh? I'm taking you into custody for questioning in connection with Nobody's the... taking me anywhere till I finish the job I've got to do. You've done enough already. you better go quietly. Be careful, Archie. Uh, keep your distance and I'll serve both of you like I serve these two out there. Put that chair down and don't be a fool. Keep away, I say. Keep away. All right, chum. I'm coming in there to get you. Then it's me or you, copper. Oh! Got you, you swine. Not yet. You haven't tried this, my side. Oh, you haven't got a chance, copper. You just haven't got a chance. Just at the end of the passage, sir. I wonder if 49's arrived yet. Uh, listen. He's here, all right, sir. Yes, and by the sound of things, he's in trouble again. Come on, Sergeant. Here's all I got left, chum. Got him. Got him. For Pete's sake, 49, what do you think you're doing? Plain clothes, Ed. 49 reporting, sir. Who's there in the bath, Constable? And who are those two people on the floor outside? Uh, the gang who pulled off the diamond robbery on the 855, Sergeant. I rather fancy... Go on, man. Don't Go be on. a brute, Inspector. Can't you see he's out on his feet? Quiet, this car. I rather think you'll be charging this fellow with the murder of the ticket, Inspector. Archie, mind. The bath. Oh, Archie. Well, I'll be... What do we do with them now, sir? 
Better turn on the cold tap right and bring him round. Oh, no. It'll be a pleasure, sir. Uh, well, what? What the... Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, turn it off. Uh, turn it... Oh! Ah, oh! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Bound to say you did a jolly good job last night. Oh, thank you, sir. In spite of the fact that in doing it, you chose to disregard my orders totally. But, Inspector, if you hadn't gone to that flat, Tom Black would have got clean away. Uh, yes, yes, yes. There's, there's no doubt, 49, that thanks to your observation... And his deduction. Quiet, Joe. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, he, his observation plus his deduction... To say and... nothing of his courage. Quiet, Joe. Miss Carr. Who's supposed to be commending this man, you or me? Well, you are, Inspector, but I must say you're not overdoing it. Ah, Joan. There then, Miss Carr. A little more respect, if you please. All the same, she's quite right, Sergeant. It took a great deal of pluck to tackle that maniac. No more luck than pluck, sir. Oh, well, luck, pluck, deduction or observation, whichever it was, it resulted in the capture of the gang who did that train job. Have you recovered the diamonds yet, sir? Yes, this fellow, Jerry Burton, made a statement squealing on the character who fenced for him. Burton will go up for a nice long stretch when he gets out of hospital. And we picked up the girl's father in the Euston pub. The uh, divisional surgeon seems to think that this fellow Black's unfit to plead. You mean he's insane? I'm afraid so. When he learned the trick that girl had played on him, he went right off the rails. And that poor girl paid the penalty for her extreme foolishness. By the way, 49, I've had a word with your inspector and i fixed it for you to have a further 48 off. I think you've earned it. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Isn't that wonderful, Joan? Oh, Joan? marvellous, but uh, we'll keep in close touch, Inspector. Keep in touch? What for? Well, you never know. Something important might crop up, and where would you be then? Why, oh, Joan, where would I be? Yes, without Archie and Oh, me. my Sunday helmet. What? Get them out of here. of PC-49 by Alan Stranks. The cast was as follows. PC-49, Brian Reese. Joan Carr, Joy Shelton. Chief Inspector Wilson, Leslie Perrins. Sergeant Wright, Eric Phillips. Janet, Mary McKenzie. Angus, John Laurie. Tom Black, Gordon Jackson. Jerry, John Blythe. Tansy Jackson, Anthony Keary. Ticket checker, Frederick Buckland. The station master, Robert Vernon. Production by Vernon Harris. <laughs>